What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and in this video I'm gonna be showing you this latest unofficial dirt face ROM and I have been using this ROM for a couple of days now and I have to say this has been one of the most stable dirt face builds that I have seen recently and here you will also get the MIUI camera and stuff as default camera and we have the quick setting lag fixed because it doesn't have the QPR2 clock and stuff as you can see so the quick setting panel is really really smooth no issues whatsoever and we have a lot more changes by the way this is the 15th june 2023 build of this dirt fist unofficial tango and this of course includes the g apps and stuff no need to worry about that here is how the about section looks like we have the dirt fist logo up top then we also get the platform version that's the android version which is showing as 13 and we have the dirt fist version as 13 community tango for suite or for the redmi note 10 pro and again the build date shows up right here we have the change logs and this is a really good thing that you can see the change log just with a click in the about section and we also have the maintainer's name which is Nutella Dev. so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. The security patch here is still of May 5th 2023. No ROMs has come with the June security patch. I didn't see that and we have the baseband version and the kernel version showing right here which is the 4.14 Bantam kernel and the SLX status shows as enforcing. By the way if you want to flash this ROM the links for that will be present in the description. In the system settings this is how it looks like we have the gestures right here in here we have the swipe rig screenshot at first we have the share edit delete and the google lens feature and here we also have the quickly open camera you can enable it if you want the system gestures are there and also we do get the swipe to invoke assistant that is actually working fine i guess yep as you can see it is working we have the left edge right edge customization back gesture animation and we also have the haptic feedback then we also have the back gesture height you can actually change that it will show in which height it will work we have the height gesture bar and stuff then you can also customize the gesture bar length and the thickness of it or the pill bar radius and i have customized it to the fullest and with that this is how big and thick it looks we also have the two button and three button navigation we have the hold for assistant there and we also have the one-handed mode and stuff working perfectly we also have the press and hold power button action you can change it to digital assistant quick pull down is there for the quick settings and the prevent ringing option is there in the gestures there is also the usb configuration for convenience you can set it to file transfer if you want and we also have the dirt fist updater but i don't think it will work not really sure because this is an unofficial build and we also have the sweet parts on the bottom there you will get the high refresh rate and i have been using it with the 60 to 120 because with like all the time 120 i have seen i have been seeing a little bit of lags here and there slightly but i would say with the 60 to 120 or auto the refresh rate is much more smoother feeling i'll show you with chrome what it shows in this vfo and we have the refresh rate per app you can set it to 60 90 and 120 hertz per app you can choose also we have the d streaming you can turn it on but i have seen with d streaming turned on the display goes a little bonkers with some video players and stuff so i disabled that we have the thermal profiles right here you can set per apps thermal profile to default benchmark browser camera dialer gaming navigation streaming and videos we also have the me sound enhancer right here i have enabled that to youth edition you can also choose it to other options and by the way the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth and stuff has been one of the best over here no issues even with a wired headset and we have the choose preset option bass booster and stuff are there and we have the scenario as well then the enable hi-fi option is also there we also do get a clear speaker option you can enable it if you want now let me show you the stock launcher this is how it looks like to the left of the home screen we do have the google's discover page and it is smooth enough i would say once it loads and here let me actually go to the home screen swiping up will get you to the app drawer no issues with that swiping down anywhere will get you to the quick setting panel and it has this frosted glass kind of look it looks really beautiful it has this blur i mean in the background if you're noticing even in dark mode it appears and it looks beautiful you can actually see the icons in the background if you're noticing so yeah this actually looks really really cool and here i have added a lot of toggles by the way let me show you in the power menu we have this panic trigger feature in this rom i think this is some kind of emergency kind of mode and you can actually set it up if you have inserted a sim card i think and inside the restart option i have enabled the advanced reboot of course and with that i can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot if i want let me show you the toggles we have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth flashlight auto rotate battery server night light and the screen recording is also there we have this enable hevc and the other functionalities and we also have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time nearby share hotspot data saver always on display you can actually toggle it on or off and also for charging and we have the dark theme extra dim device control 
heads up and we also have the ambient display dirt space and the reboot toggle as well the sound toggle dolby atmos is also there if you tap and hold on it it will open the dolby atmos and you can just customize it from here whichever you want to use now let me show you the stock camera well you are getting this miui camera right out of the box and the 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens is working fine 1x 2x all the lenses are working perfectly no issues and if i show you the front camera as you can see this is how it looks so the front camera is actually working fine and we also have the portrait mode and stuff and if you swipe up you will get multiple mode options if you want those there is the 64 megapixel mode and the documents mode and stuff all the things are there you can shoot pro mode videos up to 4k 30fps if you want to shoot 1080p 60 that's totally fine you can do that no issues even in normal video settings there is 1080p 60fps and up to 4k 30fps also the super macro lens and stuff is there let me actually show you if it's working let me switch the photo mode so yep, it looks like the super macro lens and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No issues with the MIUI camera present by default here. And this is just great that we get the MIUI camera at least right out of the box here. Now inside app settings, you will get some newer options like the game space and stuff is of course there. You can add any game that you want and get the overlay, not an issue. And we also have this app compatibility changes. You can actually enable it, I guess. Also, there is this new transistor task mode. And these options I have also seen in Evolution X ROM builds, the latest ones. And you can use it if you want to, if you're a pro user, I guess. There is also this parallel space. So if you want to have two different accounts for a specific app, you can definitely add that app and have two different accounts log in with that same app. And we also have the notifications and the battery settings right here. I'll show you those, but first let me show you the drive space. This is where you will find the customization. And you can switch the tabs as you can see, status bar, quick setting panel and stuff. All these like customization options are there and the animations are working perfectly here, even in the customization section. Now here we have the battery three settings first but i would say it's a lot less when compared to other roms just notice there are three options for the battery style we have the show percentage and so percent inside option so that's it we also have the clock style and in here i have actually customized the clock this is how it looks like with that but for the background chip you can actually change it to outline or something like that if you want to it just force closes the ui for once i guess we just unlock and as you can see the outline one in the light theme looks much much better with the clock, the background chip I mean, and you can customize it however you want. We have the status bar items in here. We have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons. You can enable them if you want. We also have the traffic indicators right here. These you can enable. In the misc settings, we have the status bar lyric, the logo, notification count. We have the show Wi-Fi type icon and we have the Bluetooth battery status, 4G icon and stuff. All these things you can enable. Let me go back and let's move on to the quick setting panel customization. In here, we have the retiker, landscape only and use app colored background is there. And inside quick settings, we have the required unlocking to use sensitive tiles, hide quick setting in lock screen and stuff. And the background transparency you can customize. The brightness slider, you can actually choose it to show always. And the position, you can put it to bottom like me and we have the brightness slider style i have changed it to bang but you can use with other options if you want those now we also have the battery estimate show squiggle animation clear all notification and we have the button style for that we have the button background as well then we have the show quick setting footer text animation style and the animation duration also we have the interpolator and the vibrate on touch next one in the lock screen ui and in here we have the fingerprint authentication disable ripple effect and the lock screen clock font now there are plethora of lock screen clock fonts which are there i have been using it with the like vibor or something like that charging animation is there lock screen charging info is there and the temperature unit you can customize between fahrenheit or celsius we have the media cover art as well then we have the lock screen shortcuts you can change it to flashlight or something like that wallet is not useful for india but yes these are the shortcuts that you can choose from in the ambient display we have ambient wake gestures and the battery bar when charging let me go back we have the general settings in here we have the android p style animation in the customization we have the whole ui style you can change it from here also we have the advanced monet theme settings and from here you can change the theme style fully to the tonal spot vibrant expressive etc options also the color source you can choose and the luminance chroma factor and the tint background etc you can customize then we have the headline and body fonts and these are the fonts which are there plethora of fonts are here including with the big noodle titling and stuff also the nothing dot font should be there we have the comic sans lg smart gothic and stuff and all other fonts that you are noticing from right here then we have the icon packs and these are the options again plethora of options for the icon packs if you're noticing the wi-fi icon styles are there as well and again amazing amount of options even for the icon shapes we have plenty of options and the signal icons are there and there are too much options even for the signal icons i would say 
Let me go back. We have the quick setting tile theme. Here we have the default outline, two tone accent and the shaded one. I have been using with the outline one and this is how it looks with that. And there is also the pulse option right here in the system settings and in here we have the nav bar, lock screen and the ambient pulse options. Now inside battery settings, I am very disappointed to tell you guys that there is no charging cycle seeing option over here or no battery info stuff, only shows the battery temperature on the bottom. We have the sleep mode, key lab, background process and stuff and the block sensor, battery optimization you can disable for particular apps and it shows the percentage and this big bar right here. But let me show you the battery life, the Aku battery app I have tested it with, I have got about 7 plus hours screen on time, no issues. These are estimated numbers guys, but still I would say the battery life here is decent and 7 plus hours of screen on time is good enough I feel. And we have the screen off as 54 hours almost and we have the combined use as 20 hours. And here in the health section, it will show my battery health is at 86% after 2 years of usage. So that's decent I feel and even the fast charging here is working perfectly fine, no problems with that. In the sound and vibration settings, we have the media call, ring, etc. volume controls. If we scroll down mode, we have the noisy notification, vibration, haptics and stuff. And the haptic feedback here is really good. We have the per app volume control as well. This is how the volume panel actually looks like. You can expand the volume panel or change the output device from here. And for normal expansion, this is how you can do it. We also have the phone putting into mute or silent mode from right here. We have the mute media volume on silent and in the additional settings, you can disable this charging vibration and stuff if you don't like those. And we also have the smart pause and the other features that you are noticing from here. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness. In the lock screen, we have the allow face unlock when only swiping up option. And show device control, control from lock device. Double line clock, ambient edge lighting option is there. You can enable it if you want. Always show time and info is there. That's always on display. You can schedule it if you want. And we have the ambient music ticker, quick screen for notification and stuff. Let me go back. We have the dark theme, display size and text. Pocket detection is also there. And there is a night light. The live display option is also there, we have the color calibrations as well. And the auto rotate screen, full screen app, screen saver mode and the double tap to wake. Also there is again a prevent accidental wake up and the double tap to wake, wake up on plug, you can disable it if you want. Enable blur option is there and there is a display cutout option. So you can have some cutout on the camera I guess and there are huge amount of options for that. We also have the desktop mode if you want that. In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. By the way, I have been using a uh, fresh walls apps wallpaper, this is a iOS kind of wallpaper I would say. And you can change it from right here. There is also this dark space kind of, I mean dark faced kind of wallpaper. Let me go back. We have the colors and 16 colors you will get for the wallpaper and the basic colors. The dark theme is there. The themed icons are there. You can also have the app grid change up to 6 by 6. We also have the system icon packs and the fonts and the shapes you can change from here. But first, talking about the launcher, yes, there is the battery widget and stuff. I have connected to this Bluetooth device. If you're noticing this Bluetooth icon, it is not showing the Bluetooth battery. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's fine. We also have the Google clock widget and stuff. And here, animations of opening and closing the things. It's working perfectly fine. No issues. Let me actually show you the home screen settings. This is how it looks like. And if you're wondering which launcher is this, well, this is the dark launcher here it shows as you can see the name and you can have the split top mode and stuff from here and there is the freeform mode as well and lens clear all, all the options are there. Let me show you in here we have the icon pack, the drawer themes, desktop labels, drawer labels and a huge amount of customization I would say and much more like search and disabling option and stuff, show lens button, shake to clear all and all these things in the recents and the background opacity you can change for the recents panel. Notification dots and stuff are there, lock layout, wallpaper scrolling and zooming and the parallax and the single page center, top shadow, dark status bar, hidden product apps, all these functionalities are there. But let me talk about one thing, there is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but the, this does not have a toggle option to actually turn it off and here as you can see double tap to sleep is working perfectly fine and let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed here, it is working fast, no problems whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner that I have faced as you can see. So yeah, fingerprint scanner is marvelously fast and by the way, this is how the lock screen clock actually looks. This looks so much beautiful, I have to say. If I swipe up, as you can see, it unlocks fine with the face unlock. Let me show you one more time. There's a black border on the front camera when it's using it and it unlocks. Now let me show you the app lock. I have also added the app lock. As you can see, this is how it looks. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner, it will open the app. 
and as you can see where I left it, it has opened there. Also in the security settings, here in the fingerprint option, we have this unlock only when the screen is on. So it doesn't accidentally unlock the device on your pocket or something like that. Let me go back. We also have this disable fingerprint lockout and there is app lock and there is the auto reboot as well. 12 hours or 24 hours, like it will reboot once in a day automatically. So I have opened the test UFO website with the Opera browser because with Chrome, it has some problems on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. As you can see right now, it's reaching at 120 FPS. So even in auto mode or 60 to 120, it is reaching 120 fps without any issues so 120 hertz is actually working perfectly fine and the performance is smooth enough and even in the recent panel just notice how smooth it is and if i open multiple apps let me show you facebook twitter and let me actually show you the twitter scrolling yep as you can see it's perfectly fast and if you want to know more about the performance or guess more about the performance here here are the Android and Geekbench code with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall performance of the UI. And talking about basic things, yes, it does have the safety net passed right out of the box. Even though this is an unofficial ROM, this is just good to see. So banking apps will be working right out of the box. And the DRM info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. So that light you are noticing, that's because the Air Blaster is working perfectly fine in this ROM. And in terms of Google Photos, yes, it does have the unlimited backup just like a Pixel device. So that's just good to see. So I'd say yes, the Dark Fist unofficial build, it is an unofficial build, but you can definitely use it as a stable daily driver if you want to. And this ROM is not big in size. The file size of this Dark Fist ROM is about 1.6 GB, I guess. So within that, it comes with the G apps, it comes with the MIUI camera and stuff, and the stability is really good, even though this is the unofficial build. So I would say yes, I can definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this particular ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Share this video with your friends if they want to know about the Dark Fist ROM, how is it running on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.